Are you experiencing soggy bags during incubation or dry dead zones that the mycelium never seems to grow past? This is a strong indication that you are not hitting field capacity. Let's talk about field capacity, what it is and how to get it right. What's up, mushroom fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today, we're gonna talk about field capacity, which is the optimal point of water adhesion on a substrate and why it's important for mushroom farming. Before we start doing some math, make sure you harness the intelligence of nature for your brain health with Fantastic Fungi's Memory Gummies, featuring lion's mane, ashwagandha, and choline. These fungal allies support concentration, ideation, sharpen recall and retention, are vegan and packaged in 100% compostable material. My personal experience with Lion's Mane has been enhanced REM sleep cycles and better dream recall, which improves my mental clarity because I get better sleep. This helps dramatically with running a farm and keeping up with my toddler. Click the link in the description below to get yours now. There's a few different ways to reach field capacity for your mushroom substrate. The first way is the very mathematical approach, which oftentimes larger farms, this will make more sense because you buy your substrates in bulk quantities in batches and you're mixing up a lot of substrate at once. So you wanna get it right the first time. In order to find field capacity, which we can assume for most substrates that it's going to be around 60 to 65% moisture content, you're going to want to A, first find out how much moisture is in that batch of substrate and then B, how much water you have to add to the substrate to reach 60 to 65% moisture content. So in order to do that, you need to get a baseline of how much water is in that substrate currently. So whenever you get a new batch, you might want to weigh that substrate and figure out the baseline. In order to figure out the baseline, you have to take your substrate and weigh it and then you have to dehydrate it completely, which you can do this using an oven or a dehydrator, but essentially you want to evaporate all the water off and then take the final weight and that is going to be your starting moisture content. So to make it really simple, let's say you have a small volume of substrate and it weighs about 100 pounds and then you put it in your dehydrator or oven for about an hour or two, and then you reweigh it and that substrate weighs 80 pounds, then it's safe to say that it had a starting moisture content of 20%. So in order to reach 60 to 65%, you're going to have to add 40 more percent water by volume. The next approach is a little bit more hands-on and less thinking involved. And that is the oversaturation method to get to field capacity. So oftentimes hobby farmers or small scale farmers will use this method starting off to kind of get an understanding of what a good field capacity might look like and feel like so you just gain that observational sense and you don't necessarily have to do the math at this point. So the quickest and easiest way is to take your substrate and then pour enough water where it starts to pool at the bottom. So if you're working in a five pound bag, maybe you add about three pounds of substrate and you know start to fill that up with water until you see some small pooling at the bottom. And this means that you've gone too far. So to, in order to achieve field capacity, you're going to have to scoop that substrate and squeeze out the water until it's barely just dripping from your palm. And if you do that over and over again and transfer it to a new bag, you should essentially have field capacity 
which is going to be the maximum amount of water that is adhering to that substrate. So this method works really good for small scale grows because if you're operating a large farm, you're not going to want to squeeze out all the water of your substrate. And it's much easier to do it appropriately while you're adding the water. On my farm, I use concentrated hardwood pellets and soy pellets. The characteristic of these pellets means that there's small air gaps. So if I have a same volume of a container, it's going to be about 40% of that volume in pellets compared to if I filled that com container completely with water. Now that in general will equal about 60% moisture content because as you pour the water in, the pellets will absorb that water and then that matrix becomes more homogenous. I'll use a two liter scooper and I'll scoop two liters of pellets, which has, you know, a substantial amount of air space. I'll scoop that into a bag and then I'll use the same container, fill it completely with water and then pour that water into the bag and that roughly will equal field capacity. Now this is a really easy approach for a small to mid-sized farm because you can do it without thinking too much and it's not a lot of labor as opposed to a large scale farm where maybe that would become a bottleneck to have to scoop that much water and pellets all at once. So now that your brain has been fried from all this math, Make sure you grab some mushroom gummies in the link in the description below. Until next time, much love.